Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Black Enterprise is reporting that African American wealth will fall to zero mm, by oh 2053. Our next guest is working to make sure that doesn't happen to her family and yours. Please welcome owner of Sprinkle of Jesus right. and the black owned online beauty supply store, Curl Bible Dana Chanel to Yay! the circle. Yay! Welcome to the show, beautiful. Can I clap for myself? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so you heard that statistic by 2053, black wealth zero. What does that make you feel like when you think about that stat? Well, first, I think it's preposterous. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I'm just letting you know I ain't never going back to where I came from. I'm so I'm not a part of that zero percent. Yes. And neither are the people that are rocking with me. So um, what's interesting is I don't believe that I can change the world. Mm -hmm. I'm actually changing the households that make up the world. Yes. And so for me, when I, when I think about the businesses that we've built, I remember having like a real conversation with my family. Yeah. And we took a drive down the hood and we started writing down every single business that we realized haven't moved in years. Mm -hmm. So the tax preparation, the credit repair, the beauty supply store. And so we started masterminding ways that we can build up the business, make it successful, mm -hmm. and then build out the blueprint so that we can give it to families like ours. Because the problem is that, not that we're not capable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're literally building corporate corporations. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're literally sitting at those desks, sitting at those tables, building corporations. The problem is there was a lack of leadership in the home when it came mm -hmm. to having the answers. Mm -hmm. So our black families, our Hispanic families don't have the answers. And so if it takes my family to go ahead and do all that we can to create a foundation to distribute and license out businesses with the blueprint, then that's what's going to happen. And that, that statistic ain't true. Yeah, I like that. Let's talk to the little college children right now who they are just overzealous, you know, degree in hand, going to get my future, going to get a job, and it just... <laughs> Sometimes this doesn't happen and reality sets in and it's just not enough to sustain them. So what do you what do you propose to change this? I don't try to fight the inevitable. Mm -hmm. I try to take responsibility. <laughs> and I believe that these parents are watching their kids have a great time at homecoming. Mm -hmm. They believe in their kids, but I would say most importantly, yo, have a plan for them when they leave and when they get out. Mm -hmm. And maybe you have not yet had a plan for yourself, but now it takes time. It's the time to be responsible, and that's what we're doing. For example, I have Jumpin' Jack Tax, right? Mm -hmm. What we realize is it's a billion dollar industry, but yet why is it that uh, the billion dollar industry, there's no black owned tax corporations that's literally giving people the opportunity to make money in this country, mm -hmm. that it's inevitable. And so I would just really encourage every single parent Please know that you sending your child off to the world to be raised is no better than them just having stayed at home. Ooh. Come on, somebody. <laughs> no, oh, for real. I and so, like, right I in. just, I would just say, parents, like, please, if you're not useful, you're useless. Use my family. And we're sitting here teaching you how to build a tax corporation, how to open a beauty supply store, how to build a business, which then grants automatic access to financial stability once your kids come home. Mm -hmm. Because... You set them up for failure, to be honest with you, if you don't have a plan on how they're going to pay these loans well, back. Well, often the parents are not educated on how yeah. to go by doing things. Yeah, so I think that's kind of where we, we saw the disconnect with yeah. our black families. Um, the, 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 the beauty supplies, this is just a secondary question I have. Are they brick and mortar or are they all online that you're teaching? It's online. Everything's and so online. we will indeed be licensing it out to become brick and mortars mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I think it's extraordinary how if you look at the Asian brick and mortars, when was the last time y'all saw an advertisement? You haven't. No, you, you haven't. Don't. You don't. But yeah, yet we go into them every single day. So right. if I could exchange and offer the blueprint to black women on how to open up beauty supply stores, then boom, we can start exchanging and changing the narrative in our communities. Mm -hmm. And so for us, I just want to make sure I understand that our parents didn't have the information. But once again, times are adapting. There's that thing called the internet where I'm making more money than most and I'm saying it's so proud and so humble because at the end of the day, I'm willing to distribute the wealth. Right. Those are two right. different things. There's people that are hoarding it and yeah. not willing to distribute right. it. And we're willing to teach you. We want to. We have to. I'm going to be honest with that statistic. It may be their fact, but it's not our truth. Right. And so right. if we are going to sit there and say, let's have like, I'm tired of being those fake woke people. Let's actually do what's necessary to educate each other and let me put you on. Yeah, but it yeah. got to be about you. Are you willing to take the necessary steps? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, then there's that. Yes. Well, speaking of being woke, 
<laughs> Congratulations on your article down to the Forbes magazine. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm very proud of you. Um, I watch your channel. I watch your social media. Um, your social media page on Instagram, and I'm so proud of you as a millennial. You and your husband are just awesome. A wonderful um, example of black love and, and black love and wealth. And speaking of wealth and generational wealth, um, we, you know, Ms. Quad just talked about how the families are not educated. Like, you know, our parents don't know, so then they couldn't teach us. I mean, I can just think of things myself, like my mama didn't know that or my, her mother's mother didn't know that because there's an old school cultural yeah. type of, you know, um, uh, mindset. Yes, mindset that has been embedded in our culture. So can you explain to the people what exactly is, in your opinion, generational wealth um, and how can young people take the steps to achieve it for themselves? Me not starting from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Because there was a lot of information even my mom alone could have taught me but decided not to from the simple things of like credit and having mm -hmm. conversations about a credit. mortgage and why she was renting mm -hmm. her entire life. And so for me, I feel like we need to build up the communication in our households. And I'm gonna be honest, ladies, the only reason that I'm sitting here today is because I was raised by an extraordinary man who mm -hmm. took the time to pour into me, even if it was knowledge on how to get money from the streets. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? And so for us, I think it's very, very important that um, Let's talk about these things, and if you don't have the answer, then come get them from people who do. Stop taking advice from people we don't aspire to be like, wow. even oh when goodness. it comes to our finances. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dana, you have given us a wealth of knowledge Trying today. To Thank you so much <laughs> for Turn being who up. you are and representing like you do. Please mm -hmm. make sure you follow her on Instagram at Dana Chanel. Let's give it up for this amazing yes. woman. And all that she's doing.